here we go start recording all right good afternoon everybody uh, my name is james and for those that do not know me prior to the merger uh, i am a credit spread trader right for the most part here um so i'm going to be going over the three different types of uh, butterflies that i trade uh, which is the regular butterfly uh, most of you in the millionaire roadmap would be familiar with nate doing that uh, on a couple of plays and then there's also an echo i hope there's not an echo you know I mean? disregard okay all right so and then there's also broken wing butterflies right and then um, there's the iron fly so there's three different strategies you can use and there's kind of like a a right and wrong time for each of them um i guess so i'll start with first is the regular butterfly and that's the one that most of you are going to be familiar with so let me bring this up here okay so a regular butterfly is really a credit spread and a debit spread on one side um, and what I mean by that is you're putting a, a credit spread on and then you're going to again sell the same strike and put a debit spread on. And now you have a, um, a debit bro uh, regular butterfly, okay? Um, ultimately what these are really for is they're really directionally based and it's just how I kind of, I, I agree with Nate, it's more of a lotto play. Uh, I typically put these on on a Thursday for a Friday um a friday expiration because i don't have you got to wait for it to move if you don't do one day but that's just me that's just how i trade them uh meaning that like okay if i did a put butterfly like i have here on the screen that would be my expectation that the s p would drop down um and your ideal situation is between your two longs and max profit at the, the your two short strikes Okay, um, and it's kind of like I consider it a lotto because you're putting up very little money. You can see here this would cost like 45 bucks uh, with a, a chance to make 955, and that's per contract, right? So if you guys are comfortable with, you know, three, 400 bucks, I mean, you can put up 400 bucks to make nine grand. It's a really high reward type trade but low probable. So it's more of just a lotto trade. I, I'm gonna guess it's going this direction. It looks like it's going this direction. So I'm gonna put something in like this. And that's how you ultimately put them on. I did this for Netflix uh, the other day and I literally pinned it almost perfect. And that was the only time I've ever done that. And I made like 400% on the trade or 350%. It, it was actually really nice, uh, but typically, uh, it's just a straight lotto play and I'll play these the most out of all three just because of the low risk high reward um, And it will move out of all of the three you can kind of close this off for a profit still Just not anywhere near your your max, right? So you don't have to wait till expiration um, On a trade like a regular butterfly like you would on a broken wing or an iron fly um, This you know it can move up a couple of bucks, but not all the way and you can still close it out for a um you know a, a higher credit than what you paid james can you show that again just a little slower which part harley i'm sorry <clears throat> okay so The spreads I clicked on oh okay yeah to set up the butterfly so the butterfly the regular debit butterfly is a credit spread and a debit spread in one right you're sharing the same short strike and you're buying along above and below the strikes and that's going to create your butterfly um, so the best way if you have tasty the best way to do it is just do it up here uh, where and you just set the side you want but if you manually would do it uh, which you can do in any platform like think or swim You'd want to sell like your two of your short strikes and then buy along on each end. Just one. Okay, and that creates your butterfly. Okay, equal distance from your short strikes, that's your butterfly. Oscar, that's ultimately what you what you want, right? You can see here, 
that if I did just one strike wide butterfly, your range for profit is really small, okay? So if you can afford to go wider on the wings on a regular butterfly, it's gonna raise your, you know, your break evens and the chance of having, you know, a higher probable trade. So if you can see this little green line, if you can afford to go more, because right now it's 10 bucks for 490, you try to make it a little bit wider, you put up a lot more and now your break even is significantly bigger. You have a much wider zone. So if you can put, afford, I try to do a couple of strikes in between depending on the price of the option, right? If they're dollar wides, you know, try to go as wide as possible. You wanna go as wide as you can really afford with it being kind of a low probable trade. So you don't wanna put up $500 on a really low probable trade if you're not comfortable losing 500. So you just, whatever you're comfortable with, right? Um, it is your ideal situation. I try to go a couple strikes wide to just widen my probable, um, what limited probability I have, okay? Because you can see now it's a much larger chance I could still make a decent profit if it doesn't fall to my ideal spot. In this case, you know, the a put debit spread or put butterfly excuse me would be if you're wanting it to drop if you're thinking it's going to go up you would do a call butterfly yeah if you're thinking it's going to go down or up you want to do it um, on the put side or the call side depending on what your uh, directionally is client direction is okay so again my way of doing these is the day before expiration just assuming it may like drop. I do it typically when, you know, like Netflix rallies up, but it's been in a downtrend. I'm gonna do it, do it on Thursday for a hope that's gonna come down. Same thing with Roku. You know, Roku's been buy the dip, right, and sell it when it falls back up, when it jumps back up. Uh, so I've been doing it like that. Quick little kind of lotto trades, a couple of dollars out of the money, and you know, they have a good chance of making it. Now, even if it doesn't run, this is one thing I like about the butterfly. You might not be getting anywhere near max profit if it's you know running up or down towards your direction, but it's not going to make it. You'll still get a profit if it moves in your direction. It's just not going to be anywhere near. So it's not like you're not going to make any money if you're directionally right, but not 100% directionally right. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, so the next one would be a broken wing butterfly, and that one you put on for a credit and it takes away the risk on one side, okay? Uh, typically, you need to go further out in time on these ones so that the credit, you know, it is worthwhile. You can easily do this on a one day, but you might only get like a two cent credit and it might not even pay for um, your commission. So, and then at that point, you better be right on the, the opposite side. But what a broken wing butterfly is, is just as it sounds, a broken wing. You saw on the spiders, they were equal distance, right? An equal distance in between gives that little tiny profit zone. A broken wing butterfly would be where you have an odd distance on one side to create a no risk trade to one direction, okay? So in this case, like if you were bullish with Netflix, but you think it might drop because it's been dropping lately, you can put on a broken wing butterfly on the put side to collect a credit, right? And give you no risk to the upside. You can see Netflix can just move, move and move and it would always be a profit. However, if it drops, this is a better view here, um, you can see that that's where your max profit comes in. So when you set up the trade, you'll see here, oh, my max profit's 276, but you're only getting a 27 cent credit. So how that works, is that this 27 cent credit is what you would keep if it stayed above 280 and kept going, right? Like it only dropped down to 280, not all the way down. You would get to keep the credit that you received. So that's what I mean by no risk to the upside. Uh, and you wanna maybe think it's going up like Microsoft. Microsoft's been trending like crazy and it dipped down a little bit, but you could have put something like this on that covered you if it just kept rallying, but if it dipped 10, 20 points, you have a chance of making a significantly larger profit. And then to occur max loss, it's really got to go really far past your other long position before you start occurring max loss on a trade like this. So um, you really should put these on 
further out in time because otherwise like I'll show you here if we changed it back to tomorrow's expiration I mean I can't even put it on this exact position the credit um, is really not not worthwhile and it sometimes you can't even get a broken wing so um, going out in time to maximize what it is so if you really think it's gonna keep rallying it's a good play to put on but it's one you don't see profit on until um, and I'm gonna answer that question right now Ray broken wing butterfly you don't really see good profit until the day of expiration and that's because you need to be able to close this for a credit and that won't happen until you're beyond this range on expiration day so what you would do is uh, um, uh, the ultimate way to close this for the max profit zone is you put this trade on for a credit so as you can see right now this would be like 45 cents you want to close a broken wing butterfly if it's in this range for a larger credit meaning that you're selling to close buying to close sell to close for a credit higher than the 45 and that's how you would get you know the closer to max profit you'd close this somewhere around maybe a you know a dollar credit two dollars credit um, and that's what would happen if you close it for a debit like say it's just not gonna fall down and you want to close this trade and not hold on anymore you can close it you'd probably be in here closing it for a debit of like 50% right you can easily do that too if you just wanted to get out of the trade um, or leave it on and let it expire and keep your 20 40 50 cents whatever you've got but this is a slower moving trade it's just more diversify follow the trend cover yourself in case there's a pullback right by the expiration date so um, and then let's see the next one I didn't want to clear that is an iron fly okay an iron fly is that you'd want to put one of these on it's the same situation as you would do a straddle um, regular straddle a uh, strangle or an iron condor it's a neutral strategy right because uh, your, your zone of profit is very limited um, but your credit is going to be higher than if you did like an iron condor so this you know because you're selling it you really want higher IV um, and then you want to not really move you just want time to go by where it doesn't really move too much from where it's currently trading and let the IV come out and then you profit but this is another one that unless you get a large large credit you're not going to see a significant profit until um, pretty much day of expiration when things really start to decay down all right uh, I don't play a lot of these I played on one strategy which is on Monday Wednesday Friday expirations on the S&P's um, I play this strategy and take advantage of the major uh, theta decay and today is not an expiration day so it won't show right but I put an iron fly on and I take advantage of the big decay and then close it out for 10 20 percent in a matter of an hour or two okay but it's just a really neutral strategy like I said I don't use it outside of doing the SPX day trade with it um, but it pays pays well if you're right again right and you're just defining it because it's different than if you did a straight straddle you know you're undefined risk um, so that one is fairly neutral and it's hard to find one trending sideways with high IV but but they're out there okay so those are the those are the three um, that I trade and obviously I trade the regular butterfly the most and then the, the broken wing after that All right. anyone got any questions on that um, and if not we'll look to see if we put one of those trades on Yeah, Harry, it's a little bit more of an advanced strategy, but once you really get the hang of it, it it's pretty easy, right? Uh, a regular butterfly is a debit spread and a credit spread sharing the same short strike. A broken wing is just one of your longs is further out. And you really want to get a credit, not a debit on a broken wing. Um... When you roll... Oh, you're off topic, Raj. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, Adam, I haven't I haven't traded that big of a ratio before on a broken wing. Typically, I just leave it 
you know, as it is. Yeah, Ben, because uh, that's another one because you're getting a credit, you, you'd you want a higher IV as well. Okay, so anything, you know, over 40 or 50 is going to be good on a broken wing or an iron fly. On a debit spread, because you're paying for it, you want the IV ideally to be lower, right? Um, like right, right here, you can see the S&Ps are 9.3. Uh, so that would be good to do a regular butterfly because it's cheaper. Whereas PayPal, you would want to do an iron fly or a broken wing because it really their premium is a lot higher. Uh, this is being recorded, Jared, yes. And Myron, yes, is being recorded. Uh, George, they're more, okay, the, the iron fly that you see here on the screen, that's more of a neutral strategy, right? You, you found one stock that's trending sideways and it actually has high IV, that would be one you'd want to put on, right? And you go out 30 days, uh, try to close it for 50%, uh, see how much actually contracts out of it by then. But again, you're not going to see a lot of profit until closer to expiration. So I don't put the iron flies on other than the, the same day expiration. Your broken wing butterfly, that's a, a good one to just follow the trend and kind of diversify. So market tanks, you have kind of uh, a little bit of collateral should it drop a little bit you're kind of covered but it still follows the trend okay um and then a regular debit butterfly those are pretty much all lotto trades or i mean you could trade it like a regular trend trade and you think in 30 days roku's going to be up here you could put a butterfly that far out of the money like uh let me let me just show you really quick here like if you thought um come november roku's going to be back up you, you know, you could easily come down here and do something like this, right? And pay 75 cents and hope for 927 that if in 57 days, uh, Roku's trading back at 160, right? So that you could do it like that, but I typically more play them on the balance. Like if Roku, I don't know, is Roku up or down? It's up a little bit. Yeah, so like uh, this yesterday, would have been a good time to put um, a butterfly on, assuming yesterday was Thursday. I'm gonna just do that. Like if today was treated like yesterday's down day, you'd put a butterfly on with a bounce play um, on a regular one and just do like a call butterfly for the next day. That's kind of what I do. Like, hey, I'm thinking it's gonna bounce $10 after this big drop or this big run up. Um, and that's the best time that I think to put on a regular butterfly. Very little risk and hopes for a bounce play to make a significant amount of money. <clears throat> on the butterfly do you always go out of the money yeah i always go out of the money um on all of them obviously except an iron fly one of yours will always be in the money okay but on a broken wing i'm out of the money on a regular debit um the most i've done is like at the money and that's usually like the dollar wide ones that don't move that big, you're typically going right at the money. Right? I think SPY would be one that I could show that that works on. Yeah, you, so you have to go, some of these you actually have to go in the money. So you have to go something like that if you thought it was just gonna drop two. But I don't usually put them on in the money. Just leave them kind of out of the money. <clears throat> yeah, sorry Anthony, I'll, I'll do that. <clears throat> what's the difference between a call and a put butterfly uh it, it is exactly that because you're paying a debit when you do it on the call side you're expecting it to go up when you do it on the put side you're expecting it to go down because you're paying for the debit so you want it to go down right so i'm going to put a put butterfly on thinking that the s p's are going to go down uh, if i thought they're going to go up tomorrow and rally on a friday i'd put a call butterfly on okay now because you're just wanting it to expire in that little tiny range so, you know, we think that the, you know, SPY is going to rally up tomorrow, you know, four more dollars or something. You could do like that. You hope it gets right there, you know, three bucks to make 97. Low probability trade. You can see 10, 20 percent. Okay. Um, yeah, our, our Mike, um, I, I'm going to put a butterfly trade on just to show you guys how it works. It'll probably be closed out either between tomorrow or a week, depending on which, which one we put on. But. I plan to at the end after like all the questions we'll uh we'll put a butterfly on 
Okay. Chain. Yeah, uh, it's a little, it's, it's just like that, right? You're debiting your account or you're crediting your account. So yeah, accounting terms. It's the same, right? Because when you just, when you do a credit, well, it depends on uh, what chart of accounts it is. But yeah, a credit would be a credit and debit's a debit. Uh, Nikki, it will go over your head. Um, but once um, once you get the hang of it and you do it, it's fairly easy, right? I learned this a lot easier than some of the other strategies out there. And I don't know if that's because it's the accountant in me. So Heidi, not a CPA, but um, accounting is what I do. So you'll get the hang of it. Get toss, open a paper trade account there and follow along if you've never traded the these or any other spread for that matter um, and just see how they work. You can kind of watch how a broker wing butterfly won't make any real money until you get closer to the day of expiration. Same thing with an iron fly. Um, you can watch how the regular butterfly would work in your way. <clears throat> okay, uh, what if we do not close the spread, what happens on expiration? That's a good question, and that depends where your trade is at, right? So if we are, it's easier to use a $5 wide. If you put on a regular butterfly somewhere around here, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And it's now the day of expiration and it didn't go your way. You have two things you can do. Leave it alone, let it expire worthless because you're still out of the money. Or if maybe it did go your way but not fully, try to close it for a profit um, as long as it's out of the money. If it went perfectly your way and you're now sitting with one leg in the money, you're going to want to close it before the end of the day uh, for assignment risk, right? Uh, and depending on the underlying, your broker may close it for you, um, you know, the last half hour or whatever. So if you're winning and you're sitting almost right perfect, don't hold it till like 4 o'clock. <laughs> your broker probably won't let that happen, but close it out for close, right? Because... You know, you're sitting here, you're, you're pinning your short strike maybe, and, you know, just close it for 70, 80% profit or 400% or profit, whatever it's at. Um, you don't want to be a sign, unless you want to be long, right? Unless you want to be long, you can leave it alone. But on a butterfly, you want to close it before the end of the day, so you're not assigned. okay? On a broken wing butterfly, let's see if I can get one. Um... There we go. Okay, so on a broken wing butterfly, again, you want to close this before expiration if it worked in your favor to the opposite way you were hoping, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is ultimately because it's no risk trade to one side, you're covered that way. Um, and typically you're gonna be out of the money if that's the case and you can leave it alone, keep the 25, 40, 50 cents that you originally got on that trade. But if it did work for you, and now your short strike, you're pinning your short strike, uh, you're going to want to close it because you got one in the money. And in that case, you're going to close it for you know, an additional credit because you say you sold it for 40 cents. You're, got, you're pinned on the short strike, and now it's trading for $2 credit. Close it out unless, again, you want to be long that, that position. Okay, and then the iron fly, you always want to close um, because you're going to have one or two strikes in the money, right? Depending on where you're at. So you want to close that out also. Okay. Yeah, take your time learning them. You want to learn the spreads? Again, paper trade's the best way to do it, right? Um, Toss fills you at mid price, not at market maker, so it's not 100% accurate, but it's like 90% accurate. Um, and and see how they work. Follow my trades. Anyone who does spread trades in here, follow them, and see how they work. See how they play out till you understand. Um, because you know, one day you'll be green, and then the next day you'll be red, and be like, what the hell? I'm 20 20% 20 red, but that's just the way spreads work, right? Because you have anywhere from two to four legs. Um, all trading at different prices. So, um, paper trade, paper trade. <clears throat> Let's see. 
<laughs> I'm good at math too. And it took me a little bit, but not as much as I thought it was going to. And maybe that's because I was good at math. But once you realize what each term means after you do it multiple times, you'll, you'll get it really quick. Okay. So um, on that note, uh, we can go ahead and place a trade. So I was looking at a couple um, and I'm debating which one I wanted to do here. Um, I'm not going to do an iron fly. I don't really like those trades. So it's either going to be a butterfly or a, uh, a broken wing butterfly. Right, and we want to do before expiration. So let's see. How's Netflix looking right now? Oh, yeah, you know what, Anna? Let's go over that really quick before we put a trade on so I can show you. Uh, and think or swim here. Let me let me bring it over here. So on think or swim. To put the same three butterflies on, <clears throat> see if it comes up here. All right, we're just gonna open one. Wow, I don't need that many. More than that though. Okay, so <clears throat> you got a couple ways you could put them on if you're familiar with it. Um, I personally like if I was when I was trading in Thinkorswim to manually put them in, but you have a couple of ways you can do it. You can right click and sell and then do butterfly they have it right here okay or you can manually select you know each one 75 85 95 but then you need to come in here and change that one so that you have two strikes so that would be your butterfly um your regular debit butterfly in think or swim okay um and then for an iron fly, it's easier. You, you'd have to do an iron condor so that you get both sides. So you would sell iron condor. That's the wrong one. I think. And then you got to change your short strikes to be the same strike. And now you have your iron fly. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Um, Michael, does Tasty Works have paper trade? Not yet. They do not, but I think they are going to get there eventually. Do I ever take the option direction? Oh, your app art. Okay, sorry. James working five butterflies and six swim. Okay. Uh, Janie, I think it's just level three to trade basic spreads. So if you wanted to try it, you could do that. Um, Can the butterfly be saved in the watch list? I don't know what you mean, but can the butterfly be saved in the watch list? <clears throat> what do you mean by can it be saved? Like like uh, how Nate has it on Think or Swim following his position? The trade? I think so. Um, I don't trade in it, so I don't do it that way. So I couldn't tell you. Someone else would have to answer that one. Um, it might be all separate legs up there and you got to track it that way, but I'm not sure to be honest. I'm sorry. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> all right. So let's put a trade on. You can do beginner class a couple different times vertical spreads in list. Yes, Matt. Um, remind me when we're done with this video, and I'm, I'm gonna answer that question when we're done with this lesson. Okay. Um, so, uh, what's Netflix looking like? Because I want to either put on a uh, broken wing butterfly or a uh, red butterfly. So I just want to kind of see where we're at. Netflix has been. Netflix is down today. Okay, so like Netflix, we could do uh, a broken wing butterfly with no risk to the downside, but if it rallies back up a little bit, uh, we can do something like that and just keep following the trend with Netflix. We could think with the S&Ps up as much as they are, we can play a Friday fade 
on a regular butterfly and we can do something like that too. Let's check out, okay, you wanna check out Lulu? Let's check out Lulu, what's Lulu doing? So uh, we look at Lulu, okay, Lulu's down today. So you can do a couple of different ways, right? You can, if you think Lulu's gonna come down more, do a put spread. If you think it's gonna bounce off this, you know, what is this, the eight, the 21? I can't remember. <clears throat> the eight, right, and, and go back up. You could do a call spread, it's not too bad. That's what I'm thinking, Francisco. I'm actually really thinking um, like a Friday fade type play on the S&Ps with as much as they've been up, you know, just kind of maybe doing um, 20 points or so down and, and shoot for a Friday fade. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, I looked at it a little bit earlier and it's fairly cheap to put on. So I was looking at doing, and not an AM, I want to do tomorrow's um and a day so i would be thinking it's gonna fade a little bit here where are we at we're at three three 30 11 so that's 10 points there maybe 15 points widen it a little bit okay so you can see here we're at between 95 and 105 it's bounced so you know you think uh SPs are gonna drop a little bit um maybe down to the 29.95 by tomorrow, you know, end of day, this trade would cost about a hundred bucks where you have the potential to make 100. And with it being a Friday fade, um, that's a monthly expiration as well. So, um, not a bad play. So I think I'm going to put this on, um, just following the Friday fade trend. It's been up a few days looking for a pullback here and go, what is that? 10, 20 something points down. And put that on so obviously you want to pay as little for it because it is a debit so right now it's kind of trading about 90 95 so we'll say we'll go for 90 <clears throat> and put this on and not no fill yet so we're gonna let it sit for a second so ultimately what we want to happen here uh, on this play <clears throat> would be by end of day tomorrow the s p is somewhere around 29.95 Okay, and that way that's your max profit. Um, but if it's only down a little bit because we're gonna pay a debit for it, we could still maybe close it for a credit of of a dollar ten or something and make some sort of money. So I'm going with a Friday fade tomorrow, and I may adjust this to see if we can't get in a little bit better or worse, just into this trade. Um, so it's not. It's gonna fill. So we'll give it time, see if it fills here. Um, and that's what we'll go with. And I actually think maybe we'll put a broken wing on too. Let's look at Netflix while we wait and see about maybe putting a broken wing on, right? Because Netflix was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been falling. But if we do something along the lines of, let's see if we can get anything over here. No risk to the downside. But if it rallies a little bit, so here we go. Let's see. So 286. What does 300 look like? $38 credit. Okay. So you can see here. This is the broken wing butterfly. One side, which is the call credit spread, right? Because the shorts above the the debit is wider than um, the debit spread that is two and a half dollars wide. So then this gives me a credit of roughly 45 cents. No risk to the downside. So should Netflix just keep falling, not gonna be an issue. But if maybe Netflix rallies to 300 by October 11th, then there's a chance of making 280 something dollars. If it blows beyond 305, it's a max loss. Okay, so I'm thinking I might put maybe something like this on as well. Um, we'll see if it's trending at that price. Hey, look at that. I got filled on that one. So let me get that one posted here. And then we'll see what's going on with the S&P one. All right, so Netflix. BWB means broken wing butterfly. Okay, I'm not gonna type it all, all out. And we're gonna sell to open 300 calls times two. And then you buy to open 297.5 and 
305 calls, credit of 38 cents. Okay. So that's the broken wing butterfly. BWB, broken wing butterfly, selling the 300 calls twice. Buy the 297 and a half and the 305 should be a credit roughly at 38 cents. This means now, um, and I have another trade, I have two trades on this thing. Where's it at? Analyze this. You can see now, should Netflix keep falling? I got no issues with profit, but if it rallies up to 300, I can make up to what? $288. Okay, so that's your brokering butterfly. It's not really going to show a significant amount of profit. You know, even if Netflix starts to rally until we get closer to October 11th. But if Netflix kind of stays where it's at, maybe even goes up a little bit or down, you'll you'll be able to close it for like, you know, you try to close it for 50% of that little credit that you got. Um, but ideally, we're going to hold that down until, um, you know, was it two weeks from now? Something like that. So let's see what's going on with the S&P here. Where we are at with this. It's because it's falling a little bit. I meant when I adjust it. Let me go a little bit further down. Oh yeah, 10, 10, 15 points. Yeah, we may, let's see. Cancel that order, let's do it again. Go a little bit further down. 75 cent, there we go. So let's see. Uh, where's 29.90? That's pretty far though. So look like on the chart. I can't see that little tiny screen. Um, 29.90 is here. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's still doable. 20 points tomorrow. <clears throat> no. How do I want to do this? Yeah. Okay, actually, I want to see something. How much it costs to go wider? One more, 175 to make 13. That break even goes a little bit better. Oops. Yeah, that's a lot better if it falls. That's a lot better. Let's go a little bit wider here. Let's see, no fill. All right. I'll let that sit for a second. See if we get filled on that one. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry, I'm just checking on chat. Let me. What's the difference between the two expirations? They both expire. Francisco. Oh, okay. Uh, one is an AM and one is a PM. So the AM one actually stops trading today, but doesn't settle till tomorrow morning. Uh, so you can be out of the money now, but in the money come morning on settle day. And then the other one is actually the end of day expiration. I don't ever trade AMs. Okay, I just got filled on that butterfly. On the regular butterfly so we're also in the SPX make sure you get the right one um, 920 let's see SPX butterfly 920 p.m. settlement I'll type that and we did uh, sell to open 2990 puts times 2 buy to open the 3005 and the 2975 puts a uh, debit of $1.75, okay? All right, so those are the two trades. So what we're looking for is uh, the S&P to dip down ultimately to 2990, okay? This will give us um, max profit of like $1,200, $1,300 pretty much, 1325, okay? Um, ideally, I mean, it doesn't have to. It could overfall and we'll still make some money um, or it could not fall enough, but maybe it only drops to three, you know, 3,000 and we'll still make like 300 bucks come expiration. Now, this one we're going to want to close out tomorrow before end of day. Um, actually, no, SPX, you don't. It's cash settled. You can leave that one on in the money if you don't mind paying. Oh, no, Lewis. Um, if we get a big dip, you might get lucky. Uh, I mean, I, you can, or you can close it out if you have the day trade available. Um, okay, let's see. Can you go out a week on a butterfly, says Dave. Yes, you can, right? If you're more longer term, you think it's going to slow rally up to that spot, you can absolutely go out further. I don't, 
right? I, I, I typically like the next day, maybe two days on a butterfly. Um, but you can absolutely think, you know, you got the strong stock that just is just constantly moving up. You can go out a week or two, you know, where you think it might land and do it like that as well. You don't have to do the one day. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Michelle, I answered that one. Wow, I'm behind on chat. Uh, Seth, for the Brokering Butterfly closing on Netflix, did I put my order in right away? No, and that's because if Netflix drops, you don't know where it might be or rises. I can't, um, and you want to be able to close it for a higher credit. So I like to let that one go, and we'll watch that one um, and wait, right? Because if you put it in right now, you can do 50%, and you're going to get 50% of the credit received, not 50% of the total max profit, if that makes any sense. The Netflix BWB is Soreen is Broken Wing Butterfly in the trading feed. Um, when placing a butterfly trade, it shows a credit of 39 cents. You don't know why. Um, are you, did you break the wings? Do you have a broken wing or is that on equal distance butterfly? Uh, Raul, you have to select the strike or the expiration if you look right here on the table you can see that the first one is a.m. the next one is gonna be your p.m. one okay right Rick I did go further out on that one um, I bought some time with it to get a higher credit uh, if you go too soon, you don't get a big enough credit. So I bought some time out there to make the credit worthwhile uh, to see if this play will work out. Okay. The regular butterfly, I go short amount of days. Okay. All right. Um, anyone got any more questions on those three strategies? I know I, I kind of really didn't talk about the iron fly, but I don't trade it a lot. I really don't. Um, it's a very neutral, high IV strategy and there's not a lot of options that you see available for that but other than that uh, we did a broken wing butterfly and a regular butterfly and we'll touch basis again on s and tomorrow and we'll follow the the netflix play throughout the next couple of weeks okay why is the credit showing are you did you put it in exactly like i said uh like i showed i i'm, I'm not even gonna try to butcher your name i apologize let me, I'll put that one in. You're doing, um, which one are you doing, the SPX or Netflix? Ivan, AM is where it settles tomorrow but stops trading at end of day today. So you have risk of assignment. If you're out of the money, it could easily be in the money. And then PM would be the one that settles tomorrow at end of day. Okay. Netflix was a credit and S&P was a debit. So if you were trying to put the Netflix one on and you're getting a, a credit, then that's right. Should be getting a credit. That same play, uh, you should be getting a credit on. You know, just to put it on again here. Okay, you sell the 300 calls twice and you buy the 297 and a half and the 305 calls once. And it should be trading. Well, right now, mid price is about thirty nine forty cents. If you're getting, so you'd be at a three dollar debit if you did all contracts equal. So it's probably not the case. So you might have a different strike set if you're getting a larger credit than thirty seven. Because right now, it's at least with Tasty Works, it's trading at thirty seven cent credit for the Netflix play. Okay. So I'll leave that up for a second. If that's the one you're trying to get put on, that's what it looks like. One, two, one, with a gap between. Okay. So, and then just to show you the S&P one, that one is a one, two, one, equal distance, pay a debit of it. No, the SPX play is bearish. We want it to go down because we paid a debit for it. Not necessarily, Jane. The W just means weeklies. Um, and I can show you 
You see here on Netflix, it's a monthly on September 20th. Here, their monthly is the AM settlement. You want the PM settlement. So in this case, it would be the weekly one for the S&Ps. Yeah, on, on all butterflies, you want it to always go to the short strike. You are correct, Steve. That's your max profit. Is it late? Too late? Uh, no, Ivan, I just put it up, and it looks like it, it was still trading right about where I got filled. Yeah, about 170. You might get a better fill, technically, right? So it's trading right around the 175. So if you wanted to play that play with us, me, whatever you, you can easily put it on. Okay. So as the, the SPX play is going to be bearish and the Netflix play is bearish with a little bit of bullish is where your max profit is at. Okay. Netflix should be showing a 38 cents. Are you on the right expiration? Francisco, what happens if you do the AM trade instead? Um, then you would need S&Ps to fall today into your profit zone. And actually, it could fall overnight into the profit zone as well. But you won't be able to get out of it um, tomorrow if you did that. If you left it alone, it'll either expire worthless or you might have one in the money. But with the S SPX, it'll be cash settled. So. Okay, you're doing October 11th. That's the same one. It's you should be showing 37 cents. Um, somewhere you got something wrong. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It should be shown at a, at 38 cents right now. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording now. Uh, we're getting closer to the hour, anyways. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any more questions. Uh, just try to keep this video a little on the less lengthy time. Okay, so 